Spoiler alert, Rocky Balboa should go to prison at the end of Rocky II. I'm sorry, but it's true. And let me tell you, the Italian stallion takes on a whole new meaning in the big house. <laughs> Talking about sodomy. The original Rocky training montage is one of the most iconic moments in American cinema, but it set the bar way too high, way too early. Maybe if they had known they were going to make the same movie nine times, that had given themselves a little more runway. But instead, each subsequent film's training montage goes deeper into crazy town, like in Rocky II. This is a workout that makes CrossFit look sensible. Now, I've done my fair share of wads, but there's a big difference between sledgehammering a tire in a parking lot and sledgehammering a cast iron clawfoot tub in the middle of a junkyard. <laughs> Take it from a guy who's had two shoulder surgeries, the only thing getting shredded when banging metal on metal is your rotator cuffs. That's just kinesiology 101. Rocky tops off this ridiculous workout with an inspirational jog around the city of brotherly love, just like in the first film. But this one goes in a slightly different direction. Right from the get-go, dude immediately puts himself at risk of a high ankle sprain, all to bypass four stairs. Then he doubles down by taking a light detour over some train tracks. This is supposed to be a professional athlete. Again, a slap in the face to kinesiologists everywhere. And in the middle of this preposterous run, Rocky's joined by a pack of filthy latchkey kids. And instead of doing the sensible thing and telling them to get the hell away from him, he encourages the prepubescent mob and they follow him. Now I understand kids are stupid, helpless morons that you have to hide cleaning products from, but at the end of the day, they're still kids, not stray dogs. These hormonal tweens might break into a free sprint for Farrah Fawcett, but this is a sweaty Italian loser who barely went 15 rounds with the champ. And before you come at me, all those things are true. Rocky is sweaty, he's Italian, and he is a losing record, okay? So I don't want to hear it. My great-grandfather was Italian. El Rico. <laughs> By the end of the run, we've gone completely off the rails. Rocky is sprinting down a major city boulevard with 300 plus children in tow, like the goddamn Pied Piper of South Philly. It was a different era, but even by the lax child safety standards of the 1970s, this crosses a line. There's no way at least one of these kids doesn't get clipped by a car. Hate to break it to you, but the guy who punches racks of freezer meat for the local news is getting indicted on 100 counts of child endangerment and slapped with a few dozen jaywalking tickets. Forget the rematch against the heavyweight champ. The only thing Rocky will be fighting for is his life in prison, where we all know what happens to people who run off with kids. Yo, Adrian, call an attorney. It's not what it looks like. Rocky at least had a path with loan sharking for what's-his-face, but instead let a little fame go to his head. Now Andy Dufresne is teaching him how to read up in Shawshank. Goddamn cats crawling up trees, five times five is 25, fuck this place! But on the bright side, with Rocky serving consecutive life sentences, Apollo Creed probably never dies. But then maybe he does. At least we can all take comfort in knowing that we'd be spared the Marvel Mouse speech from Rocky IV, where he single-handedly ends the Cold War. Rocky teach. As you can choose. Who wrote this? Same guy that wrote the other four. Some films are better one and done and shouldn't be franchised. Tune in next time when we discuss The Land Before Time 14, Journey of the Brave. Talk about a problematic turd.